Today what I want to do is I want to, I want to reveal kind of some of the basics of the method as you start to think about your business if you're an entrepreneur, how to think about um, to do these interviews to talk to people who are struggling. Okay? So let's talk about the first one. Is I'm a very big fan of Clay's thinking around the aspect of causality. As an engineer, everything is cause. There is no impulse purchase. There is no, everything is cause. Something ends up on the table for a reason. Everything has a cause. The problem is I can't tell you why. But guess what? If I, don't, if I actually do the right kinds of interviews, I might get 50% of the causal reasons which help me develop better products. Ultimately, it's about the trade-offs. So let me see if I can explain this. Going this direction, so if I go this way, this is Jane Doe, right? And if I go this way, I'm going to keep doing what I was doing. I'm just going to stay where it's at. I'm going to stay with my old car, for example. Okay? Or if I go this way, I'm going to buy a new car. Actually, I'm going to do a little better one. So one of the businesses I built was a... Uh, construction business, I built houses, right? And so I talked, ta um, I built primarily for uh, first, first time home buyers, divorced families, and downsizers, that's it. So I wanna talk about through downsizers, right? So these are people going like, I, I gotta move, but you know, do we really move? No, we don't move, and they stay in their old house, and eventually they switch over. And so the forces here is that there's one, a push of the situation, right? The push of the situation is things like, you know, I gotta clean the gutters. I gotta, you know, I gotta, I gotta paint the, the I, I gotta, I gotta clean the house. Think about downsizers, people who are basically had raised their whole family. It's a big house. It's like it's time to go, right? There's more than enough reasons why they want to get out. They don't know what to do, but they they have a push of the situation, right? I show them my beautiful, magnificent, 1,564 square foot ranch condo. Right, first floor laundry, two bedrooms, two and a half baths. Oh, they fall in love with it. Right, so they want to move, and they see my condo and go, "Oh my God, I got to move." But they don't sell because of the two other forces that nobody talks about until you've actually purchased, and that is the anxiety of the new, which is, "How am I going to move? I got to pack everything up. How am I going to sell my house?" All those things that are in the back of their head that they're not telling you about, oh, I love that condo, but I can't really move, has nothing to do with your product, has everything to do with them. And then you have that, the habit of the present. Oh, those are bad. I grew up, you know, I raised my family here. I got 40 years of heritage in it, right? I love the neighborhood. I don't want to move out of the neighborhood. And here's the thing is, if, if force one and force two is not greater than force three plus force four, Guess what? No moving. They're staying where they're at. So let me tell you a couple stories. I did interviews where I talked, and so first of all, when I do interviews, I only talk to people who moved. I don't talk to people who want to move because, to be honest, they make it up. They, they, they're almost living in a fantasy world. I want people who make trade-offs. They make the hard trade-offs to make the choices to make progress. Ultimately, all progress <laughs> is about trade-offs. I start interviewing people and I get this, this thing that comes up and says, yeah, well, we were going along and all of a sudden, you know, the, we figured out who to give the dining room table to and then we, we signed and we moved. I heard it first time and I heard it a second time. I ignored it the whole time. By the fourth or fifth time, I'm like, okay, what's up with the dining room table? So I looked at the condo that I had and what happened was they told us that they didn't want, they wanted a bigger second bedroom so people could visit. And that they didn't want a big, they wanted an eating bar so they could have people over, but they didn't want a big formal dining area because they'd rather have the space um, for, the, for, the, for the bedroom. And what I found was is that when they didn't know where to put the dining room table, it created anxiety. Right? And the anxiety was massive. Why was the anxiety for a dining room table so massive? What is a dining room table to your parents? Look at the smile on his face. I get it, right? The it's family. I mean, it, you've got your, you know, your kids around. Every birthday, every holiday. Is it going to go to Goodwill? No. Is it going to go to the basement? Heck, it's an emotional bank account. What do I do? I, I take the insight of that, and I say, what if I cut the bedroom down by 20%? 
make it smaller, but create a small little place so I can put it. I buy 70s chunky furniture. I have this gorgeous model, and I literally go to the, to the resale store and buy this old furniture because it's theirs. I put it in there. 22% increase in sales the first month and stayed year over year. Ridiculous. Right? And it's not what they told me. But when I found a place for it to go, all of a sudden they could move because they'd say, yeah, my niece Nancy finally took the dining room table and then we could move. And I'm just like, really? You're holding this whole thing up over a dining room table? One more anxiety and then I'll, say, uh, I'll move on. But the, the, the other part here is... Um, what I didn't understand is the emotional baggage of packing the house up. Going to the basement was almost like going into to the abyss. They'd walk out blubbering and just crying because it's like they got to get rid of stuff, right? It's, it's crazy. And you're like, and so the notion is, is oh my God, we got to move. Oh my gosh, I love your condo, but heck, I'm not going to that basement. Bam, back here. So what do I do? I raise the price of the condo. I include moving and storage for two years. I actually design a space in the clubhouse, which is where they have it as well, for them to have a sorting room. You bring the boxes in, you sort it up, you put it out, you throw everything out, the kids can pick their stuff up and go. So here's a, here's a better process to do it. 17% increase in sales. How much does that have to do with my product? Very little. In some cases, you could say it's a design tweak. But the reality is this, is that I figured out I was in the moving business. I wasn't in the building business. And the more I understood I was in the moving business, I grew the, I grew the company out of whole at a 20% rate when the rest of the industry was off almost 60% because I understood the jobs. So the forces are a very important piece. The second part, and I've got to do a little faster because I've got to get the interview in, is the timeline. This is an amazing thing. It's like, I've been doing this for now 20 years. 20 years? No, 20 years? 20 years. And, and these aren't really the steps, but these are the phases people go through. First thought, 87% yeah, yeah, of all people in the market that I was looking at had the first thought of moving between Thanksgiving and New Year's. 87%. Guess what I did November 1st? I turned off all my advertising. Because who buys a house around Christmas? Everybody thinks about it, <laughs> but, but I, they, I wasn't getting in the way. Right? Second part, they go to passive looking. Yeah, we got to move. You know, I'll see a house. I'll, I'll talk to a neighbor. I'll go online. But they're not actively investing. Then what happens? There's an event. Event one. And from event one, they start to move into active looking. Active looking is actually more about shaping up the job for them. And then there's another event, which is about basically time. They have, a, they have an ur some sense of urgency. And then they move into deciding, and then they buy. So event one, moving from passive to active, crazy thing. On the building side is you'd have people, huh, yeah, we got to move. Yeah, we got to do this. Event one. So when did you guys start to really go look? Well, let me think. That's when Joe died. Huh? Joe, our friend, he, he passed away, and then we, you know, like three months, you know, two weeks later, we got out and we started going serious. I'm like, heard it once, heard it twice, heard it three times. And so what you found out is what I found is event one is the awkward conversation that they have around their table when Joe died, which is, you know, I know we need to move, but the reality is, is that I don't want you to die and me move, and I don't want you to die and have, and vice versa. We need to get on this, right? So what do I do with that? I move most of my advertising for that market to the obituaries. Crazy, right? Why would you do that? What do I say? Time to move? Need some help? Come see us, right? Was the advertising the obituaries more expensive or less? 70% <laughs> less. <laughs> Guess what it did to my traffic? 37% increase in my traffic, right? By one little insight to know that they have this really awkward conversation. I'm not showing them a house. I'm not, I'm not hard selling them, but I'm helping them make progress. These, these events happen, and the interesting part is they happen no matter what you choose.